Hey everyone, Dr. Bagbinger here. I somehow forgot writing my own name. But let's leave that. Let's talk about aphakia and ectopia lentis instead. Look at the word aphakia. A means no. Fakia refers to the lens. So aphakia is a condition in which there is absence of the natural lens. Natural lens, right? Simple, nothing so difficult about it at all. And what could be the cause of a guy having no lens? The most probable cause is actually surgical removal. And that's kind of obvious. I mean, come on, right? You remove a part of your lens during cataract surgery. So surgical removal can cause aphakia. Another condition called traumatic absorption could also lead to a guy having no lens. What is traumatic absorption? Well, I know this part, right? That if a guy has a trauma, for example, directly to his lens like he gets pinched by a needle or there's some 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 very sharp object which penetrates his eye and t and, and and shatters the capsule of the lens that is trauma surgical removal trauma and congenital primary aphakia right the baby is born and he doesn't have a lens at all from the very beginning right and but this is very very rare right this rarely occurs what are the symptoms of aphakia very very easy Severe hypermetropia. Now, I'm sure you know what hypermetropia is, but hypermetropia, for those of you who don't know, farsightedness, right? It's a condition in which you cannot see near stuff and you can only see stuff which is far away. Remember from our previous lectures, we said that the lens has this excellent quality called accommodation, right? The more you bring an object near to it, the more it gets round and this roundedness helps us to see near objects, right? So if you have no lens at all, you will not be able to bend the light, right? As a result, you will not be able to see near stuff. So severe, severe hypermetropia, right? Loss of accommodation because you don't have any lens, right? Cyanopsia. This is a new one. Cyanopsia means blue vision. Cyan is a, is a bluish greenish kind of color right opsia is like vision so cyanopsia is like when the guy gets their lens removed for whatever reason when they look here and there everything has this bluish kind of tinge to it right cyanopsia and there also could be erythropsia which is this reddish kind of tinge in your vision right and an aphakia can also cause astigmatism treatment okay the treatment makes a lot of sense and I'll show you via a diagram. So here's the condition that we have. We have the retina here, we have the ciliary body and, and the zonules or, or suspensory ligaments. We have this purple iris here, right? And this is a new structure that we don't usually draw, but I'll draw it right now. This is called the cornea. Of course, you know there's the cornea in front of everything, right? And, it's, and as you can see, it's, it, it has quite a bulge towards the outside. Anyways, so here's the deal. This guy doesn't have a lens, right? And as a result, the light which is like coming here and it is already, and, and of course, it's initially bent by the cornea. In fact, here's, a, here's an interesting fact. 60 to 70% of the refraction is actually done by the cornea. The lens does like 30% maybe, right? So cornea is the big guy, right? Cornea is the bigger brother. It does the most, it, it does most of the work. It makes it easier for the lens, right? So cornea is do doing its job, of course, but because there is no lens, you can ideally we would want this to bend even further so that it can focus in a proper spot. But because there is no lens, so this ray will not be like that. It'll instead go straight and focus on a place which we do not desire. So how could you fix this blue ray? How could you force this blue ray to go from this path into this new modified dark blue path. How would you do that? First of all, the first solution, very, very easy. Hey, just add another lens here, right? Artificial lens, intraocular lens. It'll bend the light and everything will be okay. But because our intraocular lenses are expensive, everyone cannot afford them, well, let's try something else. Let's try something cheap. Let's give this guy a pair of glasses. Now, when light comes, it'll already be bent by the glasses and it'll be bent even more by the cornea, right? As a result, it'll focus on the proper place. So it's just swapping, right? 
Instead of having a lens here, you have a lens there. Not a problem at all. Or, alternatively, instead of using glasses, you could use a contact lens. A contact lens is this piece of plastic thingy, right, which, which, which kind of covers this whole cornea, right? And this also bends the light, right? So it's kind of the same thing as, a, as, a, as glasses, right? But it's near. So all these three things are almost the same. Glasses, a contact lens, or a lens, or an intraocular lens, right? They all do the same thing. They bend the light, right? You can do any three of these procedures and you'll be all right. Or, alternatively, you could do something even more daring, right? You could reshape this cornea. You could reshape this cornea in a way that instead of having this much of a bulge, it has an even bigger bulge, right? So it can bend light a lot more, right? So if you're missing out on the lens and you reshape the cornea, you can get that refractive power back which you lost here, right? So four remedies, eyeglasses, right? Contact lens and intraocular lens are a keratorefractive surgery. A surgery which modifies the refractive power of the cornea. Kerato is the word used for cornea, right? Kerato refractive surgery. Now, in our book, what the author has done is he has given the benefits of each and every one of these, right? And I think it's a bit time-wasting, right? In fact, let me read the very first thing which he wrote. Oh, okay. So he said, what are the advantages of using eyeglasses? And he says, they are safe. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, hey, I'm not going to waste your time on that, right? If you really want to study it, go pause the video right now and you'll thank me for not wasting your time on this, right? I'm not saying that they're unimportant. I'm saying that they have no place in a lecture which is made for students who are already in a lot of distress because there is less time, right? I can't put stuff here which is useless. I'm bound, right? I can't waste your time. Your time is precious to me. And I myself would hate lectures on YouTube, which would start going into stuff which was really, really unneeded. And I'll not be doing the same things. So I'm going to move on into this other disorder called ectopia lentis. The name gives it away. Ectopia. Have you ever heard of the word ectopic pregnancy, right? Ectopic pregnancy was when the fertilized egg would, you know, they would implant in places other than the endometrial wall of the uterus, right? Ectopia. So ectopia means something which is out of place, right? In a place which it should not be. And lentis refers to the lens, of course. So ectopia lentis is a displaced lens, right? And the displacement of lens from its original position. Simple, nothing so difficult about it. And the lens may be subluxated or luxated, right? Let's say this is, this is someone's eye, right? And you dilate his pupil a lot. Now, if you don't see a lens at all, right? Imagine the lens has moved into a place where you cannot see at all. This would be called a fully luxated lens, right? But if you can see a part of it, like for example, if you can see a little bit of the lens right here, and the other half is like down there and you can't see it, then that lens is called subluxated, right? So two, two words, right? Nothing so difficult. And symptoms would include decreased vision. Of course, if you have a lens which is out of place, you would not have good vision. There is image distortion because the lens is out of its place. It cannot bend the light in the way it is supposed to. And then there's another very really interesting condition called monocular diplopia. It is also called triplopia as well. Let's talk about it a little bit. So, so this diagram again, let's forget the suspensory ligaments for a second, right? Let's say the lens is like, I don't know, here, okay? Because it's ectopia lentis, right? It's out of its place. And of course, it has these fibers. I said, let's not draw these fibers, it'll make a fuss, but assume that it is attached to the zonules, right? Now, because it is out of place, what will happen is, let's say a light ray is coming here, and it goes straight, right? A light ray is coming here, it goes straight, all right, all right, no problem at all. They are forming one image, right? And then there, are, there is this other light ray which is bending, which passes through this lens and it, and it gets bent, right? And here it forms another image. So you, so in a single eye, you've got two images, one and two, right? So one eye is making two images, the other eye is making one image, you've got a total of three images. This is called triplopia, right? 
one eye is making two images this condition is called monocular diplopia right when one eye produces two images right monocular diplopia it is called triplopia when you mix the correct eye with it right because the correct eye also produces one image so so two images from one eye one image from the other you've got three total of, a total of three images uh, triplopia right very nice name what could cause the lens to move from its place well there are certain congenital conditions certain genetic factors right for example like Marfan syndrome and then there are certain traumas and of course traumas are understandable there is a certain trauma in which you hit your eyeball and the lens moves away from its original position right so the commonest acquired cause of ectopia lentis is trauma the commonest hereditary cause of ectopia lentis is Marfan syndrome we will talk about Marfan syndrome in a second well not in a second right now so the causes of ectopia lentis we have the genetic causes we have the acquired causes let's talk about the acquired ones first let's just get over with them right easy trauma a hit someone hits you in the eye with a golf ball right you get hit in the face with a football it could move your eye around it could cause the lens to fall away from its original position right so you have ectopia lentis then a hyper mature cataract could also cause ectopia lentis and a ciliary body tumor right remember the ciliary bodies which suspended the lens right if there's a tumor up here it could disturb all these zonular fibers right all these suspensory ligaments as a result the lens would not be suspended in the, in the proper way and you'll have ectopia lentis then we have two other conditions which are very very important to know which could cause ectopia lentis so recall that we have these zonular fibers we have this we have this lens we have two more zonular fibers let's talk about what these zonular fibers are made of and they're connective tissue right they're connective tissue they have certain proteins in them right one of the proteins let me name one of those proteins one of these proteins is called fibrillin right and let's suppose there is a there is a, a, a deficiency there's a problem in making of fibrillin the body makes defective fibrillin so these suspensory ligaments are weak now right and they might they might deform or they might tear away right as a result the lens will not be in its proper place this condition in which there is specifically a problem in the formation of fibrillin this is called Marfan syndrome right and it doesn't affect the eye lens it affects every connective tissue in the body right because fibrillin, fibrillin is a very common component in a lot of things so Marfan syndrome and there's another condition called homocystinuria let's not go into details it's pathology it's a whole big pathology of its own you have to understand pathology as well as biochemistry to understand homocystinuria so let's skip that but it is also a connective tissue disorder right i have placed these two under connective tissue disorders how would you differentiate between these two well here's just an important point in marfan syndrome the lens will move towards the upper side right in homocystinuria the lens will move or dislocate towards the lower side towards below right why i have no idea and i'm sure there is a very strong reason behind it but i did not bother right so that's it for connective tissue disorders there are other disorders as well like spherophakia spherophakia sphero like a sphere fakia is the word used for the lens right so you have a spherical lens it's actually micro spherophakia so you have a very small circular lens right and this has a chance to kind of come out and move out of the pupil right into the anterior chamber or just move around more than usual right or ectopia lentis there is a syndrome called wild marchesini syndrome so in this syndrome we have a small spherical lens it could lead to ectopia lentis and there is this other uh, disease called sulfite oxidase deficiency right and this could also lead to ectopia lentis right how i have no idea how this is a very complicated disease i'm just going to memorize it the way you are memorizing it right complications well ectopia lentis could cause formation of cataracts right it could displace into the anterior chamber so here's the lens right and it's displacing it could displace forward into the anterior chamber it could displace backwards into the vitreous humor 
or it could or or maybe when while it's moving forward it could get stuck in this iris over here right so displacement of lens into the anterior chamber that's one possibility displacement into the vitreous humor that is behind here that is another possibility or there could be a pupillary block the pupil is blocked because of the lens is trapped here as a result there is no proper circulation of fluid between the two chambers as a result it could cause glaucoma as well and the treatment would include using spectacles or glasses and surgery could also help right if you surgically put it put the lens back in place and i think that will be it for today easy topics right nothing so difficult about it in fact they're pretty low yield i, I personally think the examiners would much prefer talking about cataracts when they ask questions in the chapters related to lens right aphakia ectopia lentis not very important topics right when compared to cataracts of course so yeah and that's about it uh i'll see you in the next one like subscribe and share if you understood something and have a very good day